LOFAR is the next generation of radio telescopes in that it's made up of lots of tiny little elements rather than the large dish like you can see behind me. These elements are combined using fast supercomputers and high-speed internet connections. LOFAR works at low radio frequencies, less than around 240 MHz, all the way down to around about 10 MHz. It consists of elements mainly in a core region in the Netherlands, but also distributed all throughout Europe with a station based here in the UK. We're here today at the UK LOFAR station in Chilbolton in the south of England, and today is a maintenance day on the telescope. The dish you can see behind me is actually used for weather monitoring despite looking fairly familiar. The LOFAR station is actually what you can see behind me. What sort of maintenance is actually happening? In some cases there are small parts that just need to be replaced. There are also some entire antenna sites that need to be rebuilt from the ground up. In total there's about a day's worth of work for about 20 people and you can see in the background yeah. and, and hear from the hammering behind me that they're all hard at work. <laughs> yeah, and these are all volunteers who are working. They're all volunteers from local universities, so we've got people here from Southampton, Portsmouth, Sussex, Oxford, various oh, wow. other places as well. So for the placement of the telescopes, is there, are they particularly um, specific in their placement? They are actually, yes. Um, so of the two different arrays of antennas that we have, mm -hmm. one array has been tightly packed into a grid. Okay. And that is to get the antennas as close together as possible. The other field of antennas that we have, the antennas look like they've been scattered around almost randomly. They're not actually random. In fact, we've carefully chosen those positions so that no two antennas are in the same orientation and at the same distances away from wow. each other. By doing that, you actually get the best possible performance of the antennas in terms of their radio sensitivity on the sky. The radio waves that we're receiving are long wavelength radio waves, so therefore we need to have it accurate to about between one tenth and one twentieth of a wavelength. However, we can actually do better than that, and the actual position that we're going to put them on back onto the field is accurate to about a few centimetres. We're standing amongst the low band antennae, and first of all, what are the low band antennae? Um, so the low band antenna, they're the, the antennae that, that detect the radio waves from the lowest frequency mm -hmm. band that LOFARs uh, sensitive to that's below the FM radio bands um, and they're quite simple kit actually um, they have this metal ground sheet which is actually standard building material from the Netherlands um, and just underneath it we've just got this black uh, plastic sheeting to stop weeds growing up the the actual meat of the antenna are these metal wires um, they look like they're just holding up the pole but this is actually it this is the antenna this is what detects the, the radio waves um, okay. and then the radio waves go up here to the LNA which uh, it stands for low noise amplifier, it amplifies the signal um, and then it sends it down cables that go down this post mm -hmm. um, and go down under the ground um, way over there to the, the uh, RF container um, which is where there's a whole bunch of computers and things in there in this metal box to, to stop the, the radio waves leaking yeah. out to the antenna um, and it uh, puts together the signal from all of the LBAs here on the field and then uh, sends it down the wire to the Netherlands to be combined with the, the other stations right across <laughs> Europe. And given that all of these are anchored to the ground, mm -hmm. how do you actually point it at something in the sky? Well, it's all done electronically. It's all done by adding in little time delays between the antennas, between when we add up the signal from each of the antennas. If you imagine you were looking at something that was straight up, mm -hmm. the radio waves would hit each of these antennas all at exactly the same time, yep. so you wouldn't need a time delay. But if you wanted to look at something, say, over there on the horizon, that uh, the radio waves from that would hit these antennas on this side just slightly before the ones way over on the other side. Yeah. And so you add in this little time delay, and that, that allows you to point. It's all, it's all electronics, all done with computers. You know, the kit's very simple. It's very similar to the radio telescopes that were used in, in the 60s, in the early days of radio astronomy. Um, but without the computer backends, without the high-speed internet to connect to the Netherlands, and without all this um, so supercomputer, yeah. actually, in the Netherlands <laughs> running the whole thing, without all that, it just wouldn't be possible. It's a, it's a great telescope. We're now over at the HBA. Um, which is, can you tell me a bit more uh, about that? So HBA stands for high band antenna. This is uh, detecting radio waves from uh, above the FM frequency bands. These actually, they look a bit funny, but they're actually in some ways rather similar to the LBAs. It's just that um, because we're doing uh, higher frequencies, mm -hmm. so shorter wavelengths, um, the whole antenna gets shrunk down a bit. Inside of each of these black boxes, there's a whole lot of sort of polystyrene structure that is holding up metal antennas um, that, that also form kind of a cross. 
So there's actually 16 antennas in each box, okay. although we call each one of them one antenna or one HBA. And so how do they work? And they work rather similar to the LBAs, so they've got the metal bits which detect the radio waves, um, there's amplifiers in there which amplify the signal and add it together from each of the 16 in the box and then from each of the 96. <laughs> um, again, each of these 96 has a cable that goes to the, the container, Yeah. Um, and so the signal from all of those are put together and sent to the Netherlands in the container. LOFAR will study the universe from our own sun to the earliest and most distant galaxies. LOFAR has six key science goals. Solar science, cosmic magnetism, deep sky surveys which will explore distant galaxies, the epoch of reionization, looking back at the time of the first stars, and more mysterious phenomena such as ultra-high energy cosmic rays and transient sources which Dr Ben Stappers studies. What we will do with LOFAR is to study radio pulsars and fast radio transients. This means that we use the telescope to either search for new objects or we're going to study the known objects at this unique frequency range. The reason why LOFAR is good for searching for new sources is that it has a very large field of view plus excellent sensitivity. In that situation we will use the stations in the core of LOFAR but we'll also be able to use the stations located around Europe to do very rapid observations and rapid follow-up because they have these very large field of view, as I mentioned earlier. And listen, and listen to this. To this.